Hey guys, Nathan here. So today I'm going to make a little pinhole camera for film. So this is a camera that I made before. I need to make a new one because I'm getting a few light leaks. Basically you need a matchbox, um, an empty roll of film that's finished. So it's, that's the end of the film with a little strip at the end. Some extra cardboard for the shutter cover thing, uh, some electrical tape, scissors, and of course, wait, where is it there? Another roll of film. I think I'm actually going to reuse the tray from the old matchbox because I think that'll be easier. This is the old one. You want to black out all of the inside and I also blacked out this bit. You can black out like all of it if you really want to. Next what you want to do is put the hole in this one. So it's a similar method to this other one. With this box you're going to want to do the same thing as before and mark the middle and then um, cut out like a about a five by five mil hole right in the center. So I'm going to try and do this with the little um, razor blade. So once you've got your little square in the middle, cut it out. Oops. Might have cut that a bit. <laughs> Oops. Shit. I'm not doing very well with cutting it with this. I think I used scissors before, so maybe use scissors. It's not the greatest, but it's a hole. Once you've got this, you want to have to black out all of the inside of this part here. Again, so that you don't get light leaks. Next thing you want to do is make the pinhole part of your pinhole camera. So, this is just a piece of aluminium um, with a pinhole in it. Grab a piece of a can and then put it on something so you don't stab into the table and put a tiny pin prick into it. Only till it just pierces the aluminium because the smaller the hole is, the sharper your image will be. If you want a blurrier image, you can make a bigger hole and that will let in more light. So you might not have to expose it for as long, but I think that it looks a bit better if you only just pierce it so that it's a bit sharper. This is my third pinhole I've made, and this is my second aluminium um, like lens kind of that I've made. The first one I made the hole a bit bigger so it was blurrier, so this one is with it um, a bit smaller and it looks much better in my opinion. So just take your aluminium, put a little hole in it, and then just cut it out. You got this little square. I also blacked this out because light leaks again, but I don't think that makes any difference. Um, also, I think it just looks better if it's black. So this piece of cardboard acts as your shutter. So you want to have some extra cardboard. So this is the little, um, this is where the shutter sits. And then this is the part. So when you take it up, it exposes the photo and then you put it down. So one end is going to reach the top and one end just doesn't. So it's pretty easy to just kind of make this little thing and guess. So just basically cut this piece out, just guess, guess pretty, pretty much and just put it up to the box and see if it fits like this. And once you have that, we'll move on to the next part. So. I'm going to start cutting out of this um, cup of noodles box. I'm just using this back of this book to stab with so I don't wreck the table. Good thing is if you do it with a razor blade you don't have to try and go into this little tiny hole. So easy to pop out. So that fits perfectly. I'll put it this way so you can see. And that's my little spot for the shutter. And now I'm going to make this little strip. So basically with this strip it needs to be able to fit behind this so you can slide it in and out. The side bits will be taped and then this will just slide through the top. Okay, now we're ready for assembly. So I'm going to chuck that out of the way. So you've got your box part. I just realized I completely forgot about this. Put this on first. Okay, so I got my little hole ready to stick on. Um, obviously, don't cover the hole. And then just try and get it over 
this hole here. A good way to check if the hole is in actually going through that other hole that you cut is to look at a light and if you can see it or if you can just see it on the back through looking through this gap then you can kind of tell if it's through or not. So you want to really smooth this down so that there's no light will come through. Okay so you got your aluminium on the box then you're gonna then you're gonna put this on. So again don't cover the hole just put it over the top. Good job I was putting it on upside down. Trying to get it in the middle now I'm just going to see if this fits in. Hopefully it does. So you see, this is how that works. Shove it in, like that. It's a bit tight, but better be tight than not, or else you might get leaks. My last roll, it wasn't very tight, the shutter, and I think that's why I got some light leaks. I'll put up some photos of what that looked like. It is a cool look but it's not what I really wanted so if you want to have no white leaks in it just make sure that this shutter is nice and tight so none of the light gets in. If it's too tight you can always slim this down and then that will fit in a bit more nicely. And that's the base for your pinhole camera. Also a tip with this shutter actually before I move on to the film rolls what you can do is shove it in I might thin mine down a bit, I think it might be a bit thick. With this, what you can do is make a line as to how far you need to pull up to actually be exposing it, because sometimes you might not pull it far enough and it might still be covering the hole. Um, so to prevent that, you can just draw a line at the back so you can see how far you need to pull up that piece of paper or cardboard. Cool, so that's looking very nice. But it's the wrong side, so this side. That's looking cool. So, you got your empty roll. I'm gonna take off this sticky tape because I've already used this before. Okay, so this has got no tape on it, it's just the end of the roll, like that. So this roll will be the one that the film will wind onto. And then the new one goes down here. It goes that way, like that. What you're gonna wanna do is feed in this bit of the roll. So you can see the film like just fits in there. It's like the perfect size for a matchbox. What I'm gonna do so that I can try and maximize the amount of shots I can get out of this roll is I'm gonna put this back in and seal, light seal the other side before I put on the other roll. So you'll wanna use electrical tape because you can't see through it. So that's the whole point of having electrical tape. I think other colours might work too, but just to be safe, use black. So you want to tape all sides of this. I start from the top and then press that into all of these little crevices and then just fold it down onto the front and the back. Try and make it nice and flat and tight to the camera body. Okay. So you got the bottom and the top all sealed and then just put a little strip in the middle bit so it's sealed all the way around. I think this one's gonna be my best one so far. So that is all of that sealed up. So no light should get in here. Now we're gonna connect it to the other bit of film. So just take out this side until You've got the um, the leader out, I think that's what it's called, and just chop it off at that bit so we will be able to connect it to the old roll. You'll also want some clear tape, I'm sorry. Um, so with some clear tape, because it's nice and thin, you're going to want to tape up the two rolls together. So I just put the tape onto this roll first, halfway through the tape, and then I just put it on like this so that one part is already on so I can line it up really straight. You're gonna want to make this really nice and straight so that it goes into the old film canister nicely. Just put another bit on the other side to help reinforce it too and maybe even a little bit around the edge so that it wraps around a little bit. 
not too much, you don't want to make it too thick. And now it is connected, so you just want to wind this one back. It's a bit tight, so there's that to keep in mind. So just roll it on until it's met the, the camera. I'll have to seal this side the same as that side, so I'll be back once I finish doing that. Okay, so I finished doing the taping on this side, so this is the camera completely finished. So in daylight, I think it was sunny as well, I was shooting it at a quarter of a second or half a second, so you just go, you just like, and that's how you take the shot, and then you just roll it over, and then I did a lot of night shots. So that varied from a minute to nine minutes. So I found a little converter that really helped with getting exposure times. So I'll put that up on the screen and you can use that in conjunction with a app that I've got called Lux. Basically you just plug in an aperture. So I just used an aperture from the table and then it spit out how many seconds to expose that for and then I went across the table and found the one for this. So I used the aperture of 128. Well that's what I guessed it out to be. I'm not really sure how big the hole is. This shoots at a really wide angle as well. So I think it's about a 12 millimeter lens or 15 millimeter or something like that. So keep that in mind, it'll be quite wide. Because it's such a long exposure time for this camera, if, especially if you want to do it at twilight, so golden hour, or at night, you'll need to have a tripod. So I just used a GoPro, my GoPro is in, oof, a GoPro um, tripod, let me just zoom out for a second. So I've got this, and then basically I just taped it to the front of this. So just imagine that. On that, you just tape it onto this, and then you can easily just have that sit somewhere and just hold that up, and then just wait for the nine or ten minutes. Because this will be very easy to get shake on, so you want to keep extremely still. So this is completely finished, um, now you can go and shoot. So I'll see you when I am shooting. If the shooting of this camera isn't in this video, I'll be putting out a part two, so keep a lookout for that. That will be very soon after this, probably the next week.